aircraft seating has come a long way since the early years of commercial aviation. New technologies, rigorous testing, high-tech engineering hold facilities and industries dedicated to the pursuit of safety and reliability. The research and engineering that has been going on behind the scenes to develop and design commercial aircraft seating has led to some of the most dramatic improvements in safety the industry has ever seen, which has helped air travel cement itself as the safest means of transport in the world. In this video we will explore the evolution of aircraft seating within the commercial industry. Let's begin on January 1st 1914. The world's first scheduled passenger airline service took off operating between St. Petersburg and Tampa, Florida. The St. Petersburg-Tampa airport line was a short-lived endeavour, only four months, but it paved the way for today's daily transcontinental flights. The first flight's pilot was Tony Janus, an experienced test pilot and barnstormer. The first paying passengers was Abraham C. Feel, former mayor of St. Petersburg. Their 21 mile, 34 km flight across the bay to Tampa took 23 minutes. The seats that they had would be a far cry from technologically advanced seats that you see in today's industry and would have offered no consideration to the safety or comfort of the pilot and passenger. They flew in a flying boat designed by Thomas Benoit, an aviation entrepreneur from St. Louis. In 1913, a trip between the two cities sitting on opposite sides of Tampa Bay took 2 hours by steamship or from 4 to 12 hours by rail. Travelling by automobile around the bay took about 20 hours. A flight would take 20 minutes. This year we mark 103 years since the end of World War I. When the world went to war in 1914, the Wright brothers had only made the world's first powered flight little over a decade ago. But the exceptional progress made in aviation during World War I is still at the heart of air power presently. World War I was the first major conflict involving the large scale use of aircraft. Although aerial warfare was not World War I invention, it was the first battle during which aircraft were included on a big scale and played an important role. The same outcome can be said for both World War I and World War II. So let's fast forward to September 2nd 1945 and to the end of World War II. Once World War II had ended, the Allies had found themselves with a huge surplus of military aircraft of which the military simply had no use for. A lot of them were destroyed or sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Some aircraft, like the Dakota C-47, were modified back into civilian aircraft and could be bought at a fraction of its original value. Commercial air travel began to take shape, and the period between 1945 and 1979 is sometimes referred to as the post-war era in aviation. When the first commercial aircraft took off over a hundred years ago, passengers were in wicker chairs that weren't even bolted to the floor and not a seatbelt in sight. You can simply imagine the chance of survival in the case of a forced landing or crash. Today, airplane seats are required to meet a 12 second vertical burn test and withstand forces 16 times that of gravity. Plus, they must be lightweight with a foam cushion suitable as a flotation device and be durable enough to withstand jumping toddlers, heavy sitters and snoozers. In the early days of flying, passenger airplane seats could only withstand the g-force of 6g, six times the force of gravity. In the 1950s, the requirement for this was raised to 9g, and seats today are required to withstand 16g. Seats are designed for impact and manufacturers have learnt how to use lighter materials that are also more durable. There are psychological constraints to impact design. However, consider infant car seats. They are positioned backwards for optimal protection of the baby's spine. In an airplane, most people don't want to or won't fly backwards. Thus, commercial airline seats are designed to protect you as best they can. Your narrow, rigid seat is directly correlated to your survival upon impact. Consider the following information. In December 2008, an airplane crashed while taking off, ending up on fire in a 40 foot deep ravine several hundred yards from the runway. There were no fatalities among the 115 passengers and crew, even though the metal fuselage had been breached. In December 2009, an airplane carrying 154 passengers and crew overran the runway during a landing in heavy rain and broke apart. There were no fatalities. In August 2010, an airplane crashed while attempting to land in poor weather, breaking into three pieces on impact. 
There were 125 survivors among the 127 passengers and crew. In the event of a crash or emergency landing, a seat must hold the passenger steady but not obstruct the way out of an aircraft. On top of that, airlines must meet a federal standard for fire retardant materials. Before the realisation that seating needed to be drastically improved, it was estimated that almost 80% of fatalities in what should have been considered a survivable plane crash was due to inadequate seating. The accident fatality rate for airplanes has fallen dramatically during the last 50 years. This decrease is due in part to continued efforts by airplane manufacturers and regulators to use information gained from accidents to develop safer, more survivable airplanes and aircraft seating is a huge part of this process. Consider seat cushions. Operators have to change their aircraft's interior components periodically. In the case of seat cushions, this should be every four to five years to maintain safety and comfort. However, there are a number of impediments to doing this so often. Certifications can present problems requiring complicated tests and or expensive retrofit programs. A cushion set alone can cost as much as €600 Euro per person and for those out of production covers, the whole seat must be replaced at twice that cost. Therefore, airlines often delay replacements with the consequence that passenger comfort and safety can be compromised considering these cushions are to be used as flotation devices in the event of a water landing. Seat belts. During the lifetime of a seat belt, it is considered that mechanical performance may deteriorate in response to normal use and exposure to environmental conditions, such as natural aging of the fabric and in-service contamination by various liquids and substances. Additionally, seat belts experience mechanical degradation due to frequent normal use. For example, daily operation, opening and closing and adjustment, and some may be exposed to improper cleaning and poor maintenance. Airplane airbags are airbags that are located in the seat belts on some airplanes. This has been a new advancement in safety, and they are designed to lessen the impact of crashes with minor injuries. Dependent on airline's choice of installation, airplane airbags are often installed in first class, business class, premium economy and economy exit row seats. Just like a new car coming off the test line, aircraft seats are put through similar crash tests involving dummies. Tests like being dropped from height, crashing simulations, repetitive cycle tests on each movable component, g-force tests and stress tests, even tests that have went to the most extreme to pursue precious data for the simple goal of improving safety and reliability. For example, a controlled impact demonstration, or simply the crash in the desert. It was a joint project between NASA and the Federal Aviation Society FAA that intentionally crashed and remotely controlled Boeing 720 aircraft to acquire data and test new technologies to aid passenger and crew survival. The crash required more than four years of preparation by NASA, Ames Research Center, Langley Research Center, and Drayden Flight Research Center, the FAA and General Electric. After numerous test runs, the plane was crashed on December 1st, 1984. The test went generally according to plan and produced a spectacular fireball that required more than an hour to extinguish. More recently, on April 27, 2012, a team of scientists crashed a Boeing 727 aircraft in the desert. The team of scientists staged the airplane crash near Mexico, Mexico. An unmanned Boeing 727-200 fitted with numerous cameras, crash test dummies and other scientific instruments was flown into the ground. The exercise was filmed for television. The flight was piloted by Captain Jim Bob Slocum, who then parachuted out from the rear door of the aircraft which was then controlled remotely by Chip Channel, a former United States Navy pilot who works at American Airlines. The jetliner hit the ground at 140 miles per hour or 230 kilometers per hour with a descent rate of 1500 feet per minute, 460 meters. Upon impact, the Boeing 727 broke up into several sections, the cockpit being torn off the fuselage. The conclusion for this test was that in a case like this, passengers at the front of an aircraft would be the ones most at risk in a crash. Passengers seated closer to the airplane's wings would have suffered serious but survival injuries such as broken ankles. The test dummies near the tail section were largely intact, so any passengers there would have likely walked away without serious injury. However, in other crashes, such as when the tail hits the ground first, as was the case with Asia Airlines Flight 214, in which a Boeing 777-200ER crashed short of the runway at San Francisco. 
the reverse made the play. Legroom. You need two measures to describe airline seat space. Front to rear space is measured by pitch, defined as the distance between any given point on a seat to the identical point on the seat in the next row forward or to the rear. Side to side space is generally measured by the width of the seat cushion. Based on the specs of most coach seats on the big US airlines, you're getting an average of about 540 square inches of floor space. And you pay $432 round trip. Upgrade to domestic first class and you'll pay more than three times as much. But you get only 45% more space in square inches. But hey, let's not forget all the food and drink. In today's market, aircraft seating comes in many shapes and sizes and many different price ranges. From the most luxurious to the cheapest, most simple seats, from the glamour of the in-cam suites to top of the range first class seats like singles, doubles and even throne style arrangements in first class. Lay flat beds is standard. Seats with doors, partitions, dividers, touchscreen monitors and handheld devices for entertainment. Now with the current climate we are starting to see new styles of seating like the Vantage Solo with full privacy for single passengers, improvements in coach style seating with better cushions, lumbar support, more legroom and better quality fabrics makes air travel even more appealing and safer. The vigorous testing and certifications of all commercial airline seating make the passengers safer than ever before. So, from wicker baskets to current day seating, the evolution of aircraft seating truly is an amazing leap. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.